Phew. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, always the scary part. And I find too, I like usually the 58 mark, a whole pile of people just roll in. So speaking great. of 50, 58 people in here, welcome. Woo. Always exciting. And the sun came out, nailed it. Hello, Martha. Welcome back. I also can't believe that it's December 10th already. Like, what actually happened? Where, where did the rest of 2020 go? Although it's been a bit wild, but you know. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome in. Kaya is back with me. I love it. Hello. So excited to be here. It's been an amazing 2020 in terms of webinars, at least. Great. Yeah. And love the community. I love the chat. Like it's it's an amazing community. Thank you everyone so much for coming today. Hello everyone. I see Virginia. We got Arizona, Ohio, Texas, Toronto, Michigan. Oh, here we go. Even more folks. Happy Thursday, everybody. December 10th. If you weren't with us a minute or two ago, I was saying Nikaya, um, it's just flown by, like, especially the last, I think, like, four months have been a bit of a blur, but 2020 has been odd. We all know that. <laughs> Hello, Il I see Illinois, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Toronto, Ontario, Prince Edward County, out my way. Hey, wine country. That's a beautiful area. <laughs> yes. Stunning area to drive through excellent wines if you're looking if you're ever coming up from the michigan area and you want to go into uh, either there or niagara on the lake area both beautiful places for wine and beautiful places to see and scenery that is for sure ottawa windsor folks welcome back this is webinar 33 i think we were i was i was the one behind last week i think i got corrected okay hello new york connecticut alaska wild absolutely wild queens new york we got calgary edmonton i love it i've never been to alaska it's on the to-do list i'd love to do it i i love the snow i just don't like the slush i, I feel you may feel the pain there too kaya <laughs> The brown slush. Yeah. I don't think we've had our first official snowfall in Toronto yet. And I'm kind of looking forward to that. We've had a few teasers, but uh, looking for a little bit, a little bit more. It brings on that Christmassy feeling for me. But then, of course, once Christmas is over, it's kind of like, okay, I'm done now. We don't, we don't need this anymore. Well, let's just go straight <laughs> to summer. I agree. I agree. I don't mind it for maybe January. And then after that, yeah let's just hit the road and start with spring yep oh yeah some people as well slush too it's it's like the it's the worst part is the slush at the beginning slush at the end and done with it so great crew already today coming in i'm loving it i'm very excited i know you are kaya as well to be talking a to our special guest today and be just talking just being here i love <laughs> i love the webinars i look forward to thursdays so much i look forward to this like hour and I always tell my husband, I was like, just, just, I'm in the zone. Like, just don't do anything. And he, he doesn't do anything, but it's always just like, this is my time to be extremely excited to be here. And I love it. So what about you, yeah. Kaya? Very excited for our two guests today. Um, one of them um, I've had the chance to connect with multiple times when I was on the support team, super excited. Um, and the other one actually is kind of from my my hometown or that's where their centers are, are based in. So um, very near and dear to my heart, you, would, you could say. I love it. I love it. Let's give them just one more minute here to roll in and then we'll We'll start rocking and rolling with the webinar and making sure to get everybody settled. Hello, New Mexico. I won't lie, I was down. New Mexico was the last place I traveled before the pandemic, believe it or not. So I was with down there with Carmen. This is exciting. All right. I, 
I saw, I just want to, uh, Michelle said my Thursday therapy and I love that Michelle. Oh, that's amazing. Michelle. Thank you so much. I feel like too, I won't lie after coming out of last week's session, I just felt like, um, I just, it was all warm and fuzzy inside. It was fantastic. So next week I'm going to have my Christmas, my ugly Christmas sweater on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's see them all. Hello, Stacy back. You you were wild last week, girl. I'm just joking. It was good. It's, I'm glad everyone's back. Let's get rocking and rolling. Miss Kai, are you ready? I'm ready. Yeah, let's take it away. Let's, so, uh, it. let's get into the thick of it. As always, folks, um, you know, Kai and I have both said this. We sadly, as, as much as we'd love to say that this is a great therapy session or this is this is not legal advice, but at the end of the day, make sure you guys are finding it, whether you need a set, like if you need any help as well, please don't be shy to like reach out to any of us. We'd love to point in the right direction or at least like give you, if you need to even talk, I'm more than happy to even uh, talk to you in, in any shape or form. But Matt, remember, please seek financial advice, legal advice from the right people. Um, and if you as well needing any sort of professional help, like to just seek out the right person. There's so many people out there these days. And sadly, we, we just are not one of them. But you really don't want legal or financial advice from me anyways. So it makes life a lot easier. Um, folks, as always, um, their session is recorded. Uh, so don't worry if you need to hit the road, uh, we'll make sure to get everything to you in the show notes. So as always, certificates will be made available at the end of the webinar, as well as um, all the, if we talk about any resources, they'll, everything will be linked in the show notes. And last but not least, if your connection's not great, and I know we've been struggling over the last couple of weeks with connections, um, it, please refresh, reconnect if you have to. Um, and as well, we are looking to, um, to, to move to a different platform over the coming weeks. So please just be patient with us. We, we're definitely trying to get you guys a better user experience on that end. So um, make sure to just reconnect at the, um, at the easiest part. Um, Kaya, you're going to give us a teaser here but we're, we're going to keep it till the end yeah okay we're keeping this guy to the end do you want yeah to just in? sure quick teaser stay to the end stay till the end um if you've been following us on social or have seen our emails go out we are now doing the 2020 ece of the year awards so um stick around if you are interested in nominating someone um how to go about doing that we will give you some more information so don't want to miss um how to how to nominate someone there's going to be some amazing prizes and of course spotlight award plaque all the good stuff so stick around for more information at the end Ooh, i love it i love it i'm very excited i've had the honor of being here over the last couple of years and kind of seeing the EC awards evolve. And, and this one, I feel like is going to be, it's going to be the best year yet, guys. It's going to be amazing. Um, as you, if you're just joining us, if you've never seen me before, I'm Rhea Simon and I'm one of the early ed education specialists here at Hi Mama. And I have the amazing pleasure of working with the lovely Kaya Price daily. Um, and Carmen, she's in the chat. I don't know if she's going to join us or not, but she's definitely here with us. So any questions? Are you going to pop on, Carmen, and, and make your face known? Eric. Hi, everyone. I'm here in the chat as usual. Fantastic. So questions, guys. Make sure to send your questions to Carmen, um, and sh we'll make sure to get them in. We'll try to do our best to get a couple covered here in a, the open Q&A at the end. So our special guests will be bringing these lovely folks on in just a little bit. I am so excited. Like. We have two very interesting people on here today, Kai. Like Meg is absolutely amazing. She's got so much going on down there. And Ryan's actually up here in Ontario. So I am, I'm excited to just have two different perspectives, one from Canada, one from the States, as well as just a bit of perspective on like where, where the hierarchies are in, in how enrollments are going, but different positions within the center. And I think that that also makes, um, makes a difference on like viewing and viewpoints and how centers are run and there's just so many cool things that are, are going to come from this today so it's going to be amazing um we're going to walk you through a couple of tips guys we're going to make sure to talk a little bit more about attracting those new families this is it's not easy but i know as well um a lot of centers are running running up that full or running to fuller capacity than they were and of course it depends on your area that you're in right now some areas are still under some stricter guidelines depending on uh, what's going on but talk about as well um, those contactless moments right now. We want to make sure to keep families connected as we, you know, roll through trying to be safe in the centers, safe wherever we are these days, and um, making sure to keep those great connections going because 
the end of the day, having those awesome connections and relationships with your families is phenomenal. So jump through uh, into our great panelists here, uh, talking about enrollment, obviously during COVID, it, making those connections and just building up that stronger community um, and that communication with families. So very excited to dive into all of this. I'm gonna kick it off here, Ms. Kaya. It's all yours and I'll see you back on in, in a few. Thank you so much, Ria. I'm loving the chat. Everyone's saying hello. Keep up the great conversations in there. If anything sticks out to you and you want to share some of your knowledge, definitely pop it in the chat there. Um, so let's kick it off. Um, grabbing new families' attention. So how can you go about doing this? So the first thing you want to do is really um, create your your center's child care, the, the child care center's story. Um, you want to create the value through the stories, whether it's through pictures, testimonials. You can go about doing this different through a lot of different ways, which we'll, we'll touch more into, um, but really kind of determine what and how you can go about grabbing new families attention. Um, kind of picture what your center is, you know, whether it's through the, the goals, um, through your philosophy, what sets your center apart. That's definitely first and foremost, how you can grab new families attentions. Um, secondly, you can create a website for your childcare center. If you don't have a, a website already, I would highly recommend, you know, looking into creating a website. Um, this is going to allow parents to feel a sense of security. Um, I don't know about you, but when, I, when I'm when i searching for, um, I don't know, like a new nail salon, if that website, if that nail salon doesn't have a website, I'm kind of like, eh, you know, a little bit iffy. You want so, sort of some reputation and a website is going to get you there. Um, there's a lot of different um, free or inexpensive website hosting platforms, which you can look into, um, you know, especially if you're not too tech savvy, that's something that you could you could look into um, and really use your network there. If you're not comfortable with, um, you know, using technology and creating a website, um, that's, you know, I'm sure some of your early childhood educators know exactly how to build a website or at least know where to go to seek out those resources to build a website but doing this small step whether it's it's you know free or inexpensive is just going to take your reputation to a brand new level and that's definitely something that we want to highlight here is get your get your vision out of what you your child care center is and uh, and put it online through a website there and um, parents are going to flock to it um, as well, use Google as a resource. Um, it's completely free to to um, to use Google um, when people are searching in the area. Um, and I know a lot of us use Google here, too. Um, when we're looking for certain things, this is going to be able to have families find you locally. So really take advantage of Google here um, and and hone in on those Google reviews. Get your current clients to your current families to do a Google review. It can take 30 seconds, a minute, and they can write, you know, really compelling reviews. Um, so getting a, a Google business profile is another easy step to, um, to get new families into your center and into your door. Update your local directory, of course, too. So Google, we mentioned, um, it's going to show those local businesses. You can use Yelp. I'm sure I'm missing that handful as well, but there's a lot of like reputable services, Google being probably the most well-known one and what a lot of people um, consult for um, for different things, restaurants, nail salons, as I mentioned, child care uh, centers, of course, too. Um, people are going to look at those reviews. They're going to look at the star ratings and um, maybe give some of your family some sort of incentive for writing a Google review. If you have a phenomenal family, get them to write a review. Um, and, you know, maybe give them a small gift card if you can, um, just to say thank you for taking time out of your day to, to write a review. That's going to, that's going to work leaps and bounds for you there. Um, Facebook promotion as well. There's a lot of um, free parent groups out there. Um, so take a look in your community um, to try and search out those those Facebook groups um, and promote yourself, which we'll dive a little bit more into. Social media is um, it's definitely a great tool. It's free for you to use, and it's a great way to connect with other people um, in your community or people who may be moving to your community um, to say, hey, this is what our child care is about, and this is why we're the best. Um, you know, I, I think if you have the website down, you have the Google, the Google down and you have uh, Facebook down and um, are showing your name. If it keeps popping up on, um, you know, on Google, on Yelp, on Facebook, people are going to start to notice and they're going to they're going to start to think, OK, this is a more reputable center here. They've kind of got all the um, all the platforms covered there. 
Some tips on boosting enrollment. Um, some really great tips here. Incentive program, as I mentioned before, if people are writing reviews on Google, try and give them you know, $50 off tuition or a small gift card if you can, just to say thank you. But this can also be great for family referrals too. So um, you know, if one family um, has, an, has friends that are at another childcare center or in the area or just moving into the area, give them some sort of incentive for inviting that family into your center. It's, you're gonna see a domino effect there. Um, we've had a few customers let us know that they've actually done this incentive program and it's been incredibly successful. And it turns out it is not that expensive for you to run. $50 here can, can generate hundreds, thousands of dollars for you as a child care center. And of course, bonus for staff referrals. Um, if you have a staff member who's got a friend who maybe is just graduating or in another center, Give them some sort of uh, some sort of bonus. Maybe again, it's a gift card, or maybe um, you know a little bit of, of money bonus on their next paycheck for bringing in great staff members, or even families. Um, offering free registration is another tactic you can use to boost enrollment as well. So maybe run a promotion um, uh, for a, around like a month. Um, one of our customers ran this, said it was incredibly successful. And keeping it around to maybe a one month timeline is really great because it's seen as very um, exclusive. You know, you've got to get in within within the one month. Um, you know, having that exclusivity and, and under that time crunch, um, that's going to really help bring parents in too and new families. Um, and paid ads is another way that you can go about boosting your enrollment. So if you're on Facebook and you're on Google, you can put a little bit of money in and it, it really is not that much. And you can see a lot of success with that. Um, I know Facebook may, may be a little bit daunting to some, especially with, um, with new technology, but, um, you can honestly spend like 10, 20, 30 bucks and see really great successes and reach a lot of new potential clients, um, whether this is straight to new families in your area or through word of mouth on Facebook, Yelp and Google there. So another really inexpensive tool to use. Local parent social network. So getting into those Facebook groups um, and, you know, putting yourself out there, whether it's through your personal Facebook page or through your company Facebook page, just dropping your name in there can have really, really great successes in there. Some Facebook pages, depending on their, their rules and regulations, um, are a little bit picky. Maybe you can only promote on certain days of the week I've seen, um, or maybe not at all, like not formally. Um, but, you know, even just taking the members that are in that Facebook group and private messaging them, hey, are you looking for childcare? Kind of, it's not really being sneaky, but you are trying to connect and network with some people within those Facebook groups is, is super successful as well. So even if you're not formally, hey, check out our childcare, um, you can really drop your name in there. And again, if you're on Facebook, you've got a .com, you've got a, a website there, um, and you're in the Facebook groups, people are gonna start to notice and uh, and spread the word there. Um, virtual open houses, especially um, now when parents can no longer come in and, and see um, your wonderful center, virtual open houses and virtual tours is a brand new way that you can tap into a, a brand new market actually. Um, someone on, on our Hi Mama team actually said this was incredibly successful when he was looking for childcare. A lot of centers didn't use it and he actually chose a center that did the virtual tour. Um, and he said, it's, you know, it, it, it's able, you're able to see um, kind of a brand new, um, brand new part of a center, you can't step foot into a childcare center anymore as, um, as a parent. So um, having those virtual open houses, having those virtual tours, maybe set up like a, a Q and A um, segment and, and publicize it on Facebook or social media in those groups for, for people who may be looking for childcare, that's definitely a way that you can go into that. Um, and also virtual support center. So if you have the space and staff um, and you're able to have a classroom to support virtual learning, um, virtual learning is, you know, picking up once again, once, you know, COVID numbers are rising, um, you know, a lot of different factors here. If you're able to um, have a classroom set up that is a dedicated space for, for virtual learning, that's going to help as well. Um, again, a few customers have told us that they have actually um, set up a classroom with school agers to do their, their after school homework and ask questions for a specific educator to help them. Um, and it's been really successful. And, and of course, they charge for that as well. So that's another um, really great resource.
Contactless connections with parents. Um, so, you know, consider looking into an application such as Hi Mama to share those daily reports. You know, you can no longer just put that sticky note or that piece of paper on what the child did and, and ate that day in the cubby. Can't necessarily hand it off to the parents anymore because you may have a runner running from the classroom, running the child to the parent. You can't communicate with that parent and have those meaningful conversations anymore. So, having an application such as Hi Mama is going to enable you to to keep those, those uh, lines of communications open for the whole family. Um, sending the weekly newsletter, of course, it's a great way to um, showcase pictures of what's going on in the center um, and uh, prepare families for upcoming activities through calendars as well. You can, of course, message parents. And most importantly, it allows for contactless check-in. So a feature that Hi Mama has is contactless check-in. Um, so you can check in your child right then and there without even stepping foot into the child care center. Um, of course, we've had a few sessions on this with Hi Mama Helps um, webinar as well about pain online and um, how Hi Mama can help with that. Um, but this is a great way. No one wants to touch money anymore. You can do it right online in app. And you can even tell your parents, hey, your payment is late, you're due, you're overdue. And you can do it without even seeing them face to face. So something to consider if you're still you know, using another program, this is an all in one simplified version. Um, and of course you can always um, host a, a catch up call. So um, if you're doing maybe um, uh, educator, parent, um, one on one sessions is another great way to kind of get that personalization. It takes maybe five, 10 minutes out of the educator's day, but it is a great way to stay connected with your families regardless of what is going on. Rhea, you wanna take it away from here? I do. Thanks, Kai. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Kai, that was fantastic. Lots of great information. And as well, there's a lot going on in the chat. So when you take a moment to go ahead and scroll back on the chat, like there's been a lot of great things coming from the chat, uh, tips that other people have also been doing. Um, just wanted as well to echo once again, we have seen the the issue come up where the connection's not been the greatest, folks. Just please take some time to reconnect or disconnect and come back. We are recording for you. So, Kaya, I'm going to kick you off um, and come back later, and we'll we'll bring on bring on Meg, uh, folks. Meg Sachs coming from down in the states here with us, mother of two. You've been in childcare for a long time. Please tell us a little bit more about yourself and and a little bit more about the elegant child. Oh, Meg, I think you might be muted. We can't hear her, folks. Uh-uh. Not yet, Meg. Now but now? No. <laughs> Maybe. Come back on. Hit the microphone beside it. You might have to drop off and reconnect. See, this is why, folks, we are looking for that new platform, so not to fret. Meg, I think we got you. Got me? Yeah, thank Yay! you so much. Yay! Hi! Hello. Tell us about you, my friend. Okay, well, uh, like I'm Meg. I haven't been in childcare for 27 years, a little younger than that, thank you. But <laughs> um, I've worked at Elegant Child for about eight years. Um, our center has been around for 27 years. Um, we're a family owned business. Um, started with one building, and now we are a three building campus. So we have wow. about 340 kiddos on campus. I'd be pulling my hair out, let me tell you. Like yeah. I was one center and I was pulling my hair out. Yeah, it can be it can be daunting, um, especially this year. Uh, especially. So of course we know uh, obviously the pandemic, childcare around the world has been hit drastically hard. Like it it's an understatement. But tell us a little bit more about like what your enrollment is right now. And maybe of course as as the last couple of months have progressed, maybe what was the progression when you did you guys close? Uh, what was the rollback like for you guys? Okay. Um, so back in March, we did, um, we closed down for, um, I guess it was about five weeks, um, mm -hmm. of which, you know, Hi Mama jumped in right then because we were able to keep in contact with our parents. Um, our teachers were doing online learning still um, and connected with their parents right away. So that was a huge thing that Hi Mama did for us during the pandemic. Um, we opened back up um, in May um, mm -hmm. and we've been open ever since. We haven't really had a lot of issues. Um, and I think hi mom has really taken us through, through that. Cause we never lost communication with our parents. If we didn't have hi mama there, we wouldn't have been able to connect the way that we have. I, I love that. I love hearing those things. Like part of, 
part of being on my end of the team is that I get to hear like both the success stories and of course not so much the success stories, but how, maybe how is your family and your teachers uh, using Hi Mama to like go through their day-to-day life and keeping that connection going? Cause we know that's super important right now. Yeah. So the teachers, um, they immediately just downloaded the app to their phones. Cause you know, we have the tablets in our classrooms. Um, mm-hmm. But once we made the decision to close um, some time ago, the teachers immediately put the app on their phone. So there was really a, never a break in communication. Um, awesome. The teachers then sent out, you know, the lesson plans that they had. They said they were going to keep up as much as they could. Um, and they would do Zoom calls. Um, we started a YouTube channel. Um, so we have parents. Um, that's how we did. We did our open house, actually, for the parents, because usually they would come in and learn about the classroom. Um you know, like what we were used to growing up in open house, yeah. you know, your parents would go to. So we did that online and put that on the YouTube channel. So um, Hi Mom has been able to have us, you know, connect with all those outlets. That is amazing. So now have you guys brought any new families on since reopening? And if you have, what's what's that process been like for them? Because we know it's not the same now in regards to like it, before they'd come in, you'd do a tour, like you'd meet the teachers, right. things like that. Have you guys had to it, do any of that yet? Yeah, so we have we've on we've had a, quite a few families um, sign up, which I was shocked that you know we that hasn't really stopped. The enrollment hasn't stopped. Um, it is a, a little bit harder because with the with the new parents, it's hard for them to drop off and leave. And usually, you can stand in the window and check out your little one for a little bit, but then they're just kind of in the parking lot, and then you're standing there, and they're you know the moms are sad and crying, and you're trying to make them feel better. So I mean, all that is just reality, but what's going yeah. on? So. Um, our Instagram page has been a, a huge help too. Um, I didn't realize you guys followed us and I'm a little embarrassed about it, but, oh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but Instagram's also been a great way for parents to see the whole campus. You know, if you just have a six week old baby, you can still see what the five-year-olds are doing, what they have to look forward to. So I think our social media, um, we only do Instagram though, um, okay. has been a huge help to, though too. That's a, a lot of how we can connect, connect with the new families. I think it's super important to get is like, obviously for you guys, you're just choosing to use Instagram, but like to get it out there, obviously uh, under a safe condition as well, but um, being able to connect with parents in more than one way is absolutely fantastic. So what's the process like for new families that do start at the center? Like what, maybe give us an outline of what that would look like for them. Um, Okay. So they, um, we give them a tour. Mm -hmm. Um, We are letting our parents, our new parents come check it out in their first day to drop off. Uh, We tell them that ahead of time, you know, this is going to be, you know, your one day. We're so sorry. This isn't typical. Um, They give us their hi mama paperwork. I get them entered in. Our teacher immediately starts sending them pictures, you know, within the hour of of drop off so they can start to get that connection. Um, That's a really big deal. We also kind of set the stage depending on the child's schedule. Like if they're full time, three days a week, you know, half days, um, Mm -hmm. we send out and say, hi, welcome to the bug room. Um, Depending on your child's schedule, you can expect, you know, five to six pictures per week, group and or individual. Um, So we kind of set the stage to let them know how much communication to expect. Um, because, you know, there's the parents that want 20 pictures a day and then there's the parents that want no pictures a day because they don't want their teachers facing a tablet sending pictures. So um, we just kind of set that stage so the expectation is clear across the board. Um, so it's a big deal for us about when we're onboarding new families is let them know the expectation. I think that's huge. That's so important right now. And, and the thing is, you guys, you set yourself up for success right away by doing that. And then right. this way, your your parents are on board. And um it, that's amazing. So of course, we all know health and safety is, is part of all of this right now. New parents obviously want to know what's going on and it's top of mind for teachers. Um, how are you getting like any changes out to the families or to your teachers? How are you informing them of kind of what's been the the lowdown? And of course, you know, things change, you know, tomorrow at this time, right. totally different than it was today. So correct. So, um, you know, over the summer, I want to say our, our enrollment was a little bit was definitely lower. Um, and that was good because we were just practicing. It's like we had to relearn how to come back to work, Mm -hmm. uh, how to do everything that we'd been used to for 27 years. So, um, the summer was a good practice. Our enrollment was lower. We were able to, you know, to get used to what we were doing. But then when the school year started, um, in August, um, we had, I would say, you know, 30% more join us. Um, and we sent out a COVID, you know, action plan, um, and we outlined everything at like right then we had the parents sign it um, to know what to expect. You know, if you're going to 
agree to come to our center, you know, this is what you have to agree to, you know, mm -hmm. it wasn't fun stuff, you know, like saying, you know, we request that there's just one parent at drop off and please wear a mask and we're going to be taking temperatures and that sort of thing. Um, so we sent that out, you know, day one to set the stage. Um, mm -hmm. And now when things tr change every night, we just send out addendums, you know, here's okay. the newest information. So we'll send out addendums to that COVID action plan. That's great. I, I love that you guys set yourself up that way and making from there, you, like you said, you just you send out that amendment and you're good to go and it keeps everything good. With in regards, I want to like kind of back up. I remember you saying it's you're across three centers now. Do you would you say you're at like full capacity in all three? Do you think like one's lower than the other? Um, and are, are they all clustered or do you find are you guys spread out a little bit in regards to location? So it's a it's a three building campus. We're a oh, one okay. campus. Um, two of our buildings are the infant, infants and toddlers. And then when they grow up, they all meet in our main building in the center of the campus. Okay. Um, where we um, have our four or five and in, in kindergartners as well as our um, before and after care and e-learning kiddos. Um, so that's just so you guys can all understand our, our campus a little bit. Um, but what was the question? Now it's I just a, like, how was the enrollment? Like, did you oh, find that enrollment? one was one um, was um, more than the other across like maybe the two campuses or like how is it kind of looking for you guys? Maybe over I would say year? we're we're at a pretty typical. Uh, we have three hundred and thirty nine uh, active kiddos, mm -hmm. so um, I, that's pretty typical. Uh, one you know one or two rooms are a little bit lower than usual, but you know it's not the worst thing in the world because you know teachers have to call off a lot more, which is another, you know, hurdle that we have at the moment. So it's not the worst thing in the world that we have a little bit of a lower enrollment. Fair enough. Yo, it, yes, we were, we were talking about this earlier and being able to have a little bit of leeway with having less kiddos around is probably not a bad thing. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Let's talk about some anxiety, um, maybe with your teachers to start and then with your parents, how have you been working through this is obviously the anxiety is ongoing. There's no sure. going away, but maybe teachers coming back and then anxiety with your parents as they came back. So the, we have teachers that have been here for 27 years um, that were mm -hmm. obviously a little bit nervous to, to come back. Um, they felt they're very vulnerable. So one of the things that we have that we do is, and I'm sure many of you do, is you compartmentalize all your classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, so if you go to work in the bug room, you work in the bug room just all day you there we can't you know sub out anymore so um by car compartmentalizing that made the teachers feel better that they're not going to multiple classrooms um that wrote that they were very appreciative about that and then as far as the parents go we've been open since the middle of at beginning of may and really had no issues um so it's just really our proven track record is what's making parents more comfortable to see that this is possible and um we're very very open with our parents if there's a you know, a classroom that has a, a case in it. I think we've only had um, two kiddos that have had it. Um, many parents have had it. Um, okay. But, um, you know, I think being very open and candid with the, the school and everyone and letting them know exactly where it is and what we're, you know, doing about it um, is making their their trust in us much stronger. So their anxiety is, is, is lower when we really, when we just tell them everything. That transparency is key, Meg, right. 100%. Um, fantastic. I'm, I'm enjoying all of this. We've got some great stuff going on in the chat. Is there, I want to jump just to give Ryan and we'll bring you back for Q&A, but is there anything, you know, that you might want to leave us with happy thoughts, words of wisdom, something you've even learned over the last several months? Because I'm sure uh, like you, I've learned a lot over the last several months, but is there anything you'd like to leave the audience with today? Um, you know, I guess this, this has been, cra this has been crazy. Um, I, it's been one of the, the hardest years at work, but I also, really the way we look at it is probably the most entertaining years I've ever had at work. <laughs> um, I don't That's think amazing. I've ever laughed as much as I have this year um, because things are just crazy and you just have to go into all of this um, with a bit of humor, um, you know, a little sense of peace and give yourself a break. Um, it's all really the way you look at it. I mean, you, there's definitely times where you can get stressed out and there's been some tears, but I think I would have to say that the laughter about the, the craziness of this year is really what 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 what's what gets us all through it. I love it. I, I'm hoping you know in a year from now we'd like to say this will all be over and we'll be looking back and laughing. It may not yeah. be a year, yes. but we will do it eventually. Right. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome, Meg. Okay, we were collecting some questions for you, so you come back on Q and A. I'm going to kick you off. Great. Um, and I'm going to bring on Ryan, folks. Ryan's here in Ontario. Hey Hello. guys. 
Brian, welcome. You're, I'm super excited. Uh, I, I love this. The, the thing that made me excited about today was we had two centers, like your center, you've got a lot more children, obviously, than Meg, but it's you guys still have two larger centers. But tell us about you and kind of how did you get into the ECE field? Sure. Well, first of all, thanks for having me and thanks to the 700 folks that have uh, that have tuned in today. Um, so Helping Hands Daycare has been around for uh, 31 years. It was actually started by my mother. Uh, so we've been a family business kind of through and through. Um, for me personally, I was off on my own adventures. I was uh, a lobbyist, uh, political consultant for a number of years, uh, CEO of different companies. And, and the stars kind of aligned. Uh, recently that uh, that brought me back uh, into the family business. So uh, I've always been around it. Um, I, my my two kids go to the centers. Uh, so it's been, uh, it was kind of a, a good serendipitous uh, opportunity for me to come back and, uh, and help take the organization uh, through the next 31 years of our existence. That that's so exciting. I love that your mom was, you know, she she had her hands in on all of it. And I'm sure she's she's super proud. Um, and I'm sure I'm sure you love working knowing you know, your mom was the founder of all this. So tell us a little bit more about like the layout. I know you guys are nine centers, you're spread out over 900 children, like maybe just get us an idea of like what the center setups look like right now. Sure. So uh, all of our centers have uh, at least infant through uh, through preschool, kindergarten classrooms. Um, several of our centers have uh, school age programs as well, uh, but they are set up in, in kind of a variety of different buildings. Uh, a handful of them are standalone. Uh, two of them, three of them are on the second floor. Um, they're all kind of unique in their own way. And, uh, you know, we look for a number of different things as we as we kind of search for an ideal location, but uh, obviously population centers and and being uh, just east of Toronto, uh, this is a area of uh, high urban sprawl. So lots of suburban housing, uh, lots of uh, commercial development to support those. Uh, but we you know, we always look for centers that have uh, ample natural light, um, ample opportunity for uh, for parking uh, and for uh, a large playground that we can uh, we can utilize on a daily basis. I, I love it. I love that you, you know, just being east of here. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's the, the urban sprawl is huge. Yeah. And um, and it, there's lots of families. They all need the support. They need the help. So let's let's talk about you guys are obviously a larger organization. What's the team been up to right now when in regards to handling enrollment, getting those families back in the door? Um, I know, obviously, some things are going to be similar to states. Some things won't. But what's been like the ongoing rollback for you guys from when we closed in March to opening fully back up in September. Everything's been normal. Nothing has changed. No, I'm just kidding. It's been, wow. it's been, <laughs> it, it's been the chaos that, uh, that I think every childcare operator has faced over the past few months. Um, so as you know, Rhea, we, we were shut down by the government, uh, in, uh, in March, uh, March 16th or 17th. And we were, uh, child care centers were allowed to reopen in the middle of June. We reopened in, uh, on June 22nd, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the, uh, the reopening phase was, uh, went as well as you can expect, even trying to navigate, uh, information that is changing by the day, by the minute, um, trying to communicate with families. But, but the reality is, is that when you were shut down for that long and, and with so much unknown in, uh, from the general public, you're almost starting from scratch. You're almost going back to the table and, and, and trying to fill your centers again, um, just like you're opening them brand new. The, uh, the interesting part for us was that uh, during the course of COVID um, and actually just prior to COVID happening, we had agreed to, uh, to two new centers. Uh, so we were actively engaged in, uh, in expansion uh, of just under 200 uh, spaces uh, when, uh, when COVID hit. So, uh, we were locked in. We were, uh, we were committed to them. So we, uh, as soon as we were allowed to begin construction on them, uh, we did. And the, uh, besides the challenge of trying to, uh, to fill a new center that parents had never seen, um, and weren't likely able to walk through when we did open, um, we had to do it completely paperless. And, and that's where, uh, where Hi Mama came in. We, we managed to, uh, handle both centers, new enrollment and all of the other centers enrollment since March, uh, completely through the Hi Mama platform and completely paperless. And, and that wasn't the case on March 15th of this year. Oh, wow. I'm not going to lie. As soon as you said you guys were locked into those two new buildings, I was like, ee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that must have been extremely stressful. Um, how, what about the teachers? How did they handle kind of getting back into the classroom, especially, you know, with Hi Mama and parents not being able to see anything, new parents, new families? How was that rollout for you guys? 
Yeah, so so equally, you know, kind of a different challenge for parents and, and than it is yeah. for teachers. For the parents, we we use the Hi Mama platform uh, throughout the shutdown, and we continue to use it on a daily basis now. Uh, but really, to keep them in the loop, you know, not every parent with a child in childcare, you know, follows the news updates or 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 looks at the you know regulatory orders from the government to see what type of restrictions, what type of directions are are being put on uh, on childcare centers. So we use Hi Mama as an opportunity to kind of cut through the noise, um, really clearly uh, identify to them um, what we're going to be able to do, when we think we're going to be able to reopen, and under what conditions we're going to be able to do that. Um, for our staff, you know, a much different world. You know, what uh, what type of uh, of personal protective equipment would they be uh, would they be required to wear? You know, what does uh, what does their day to day look like now? When you know you go from a very close kind of intimate uh, world of, of early childhood education to you know, can you pick up a child now? Can you can you be close to them? Um, all of that was uh, was I guess five five months in the making as we as we made sense of all the government orders. Um, but everyone's really settled in, you know, parents and staff, um, uh, you know, together. Uh, really, I think everyone understands that we're all navigating this this unknown and challenging situation together. Um, we're all learning. We're all trying to make the best of it. And, you know, we haven't had parents in our centers since uh, since March. So, you know, when we talk about trust and building relationships, you know, how do you maintain that trust with with parents when uh, they haven't been in the center for for mm. seven months um, and for new parents that have, in some cases, never been in the center? And yeah. so the the way that we've done that is is using, you know, Hi Mama daily reports, uh, activity reports, uh, taking advantage of the menu functionality, taking advantage of the activity planner um, and really being able to align, you know, the pictures and videos of the children with you know, the type of learning that they're doing and the meals they're eating. Um, and, and also just really being able to use that as a selling point to new families and say, hey, even though you're not going to be able to walk in the center for the next couple of months, you're going to be able to see what's going on there on a daily basis. I, I love that, right? I love that you guys just, you really went right into tune and, and really, I feel like you got, you guys and Hi Mama were meant to be at the end of the day. <laughs> like, I never sadly got to use it in the classroom myself, but uh, I would have loved to as a teacher. I feel like it would have been a huge asset. I want to back up though, because you had mentioned virtual learning um, and you guys, are you guys supporting like classrooms of virtual learning right now? Um, and especially we're kind of questioning this lockdown right now we're in is, not probably going to end at the end of December, at least in my side, it won't. But um, are you guys going to continue with that? What's What's been like your perspective with the virtual learning and how has it actually been played out in the centers right now? What's parents' thoughts on it? The whole kind of full circle. Yeah, great, great question. So during the shutdown from March to uh, to June, uh, we utilized the the Hi Mama messaging system uh, to send out YouTube videos that our staff made, um, and they were you know as simple as reading a story or, or developing an activity or, or coming up with craft ideas. It was really a nice way for us to connect with parents, but not overwhelm them, um, not send them something every day. We we also took advantage of the um, I can't remember what you guys called it, but it was the craft idea of the day uh, that we would forward on to our parents. And that that was great. Um, now we're uh, we're completely uh, in person. So all of our all of our enrolled children are there in person. Um, and so we're not doing any virtual learning right now. And we hope we don't have to uh, we do hope we don't have to be able to do it. So, yeah, I, I hear you. I'm just like, oh, man. OK. That, fantastic. I know a lot of centers are, um, they're juggling both, depending on yeah. obviously where they are. A lot of centers are doing both. So, and kudos to your teachers for juggling it over the course of those couple of months that it was so gray and we didn't know what to do. So um, huge shout out to them. So talking about your team, talking about those connections with uh, building with new families, uh, as you'd mentioned, that's not easy when they can't go into the center, but how has been like your staff and your, and you know, communicating those the COVID state uh, COVID nineteen safety measures that you guys are have in place. How is that kind of working with your families? New, old, doesn't matter who they are. Yeah, I, I think Meg nailed it, and it's it's mm -hmm. transparency. It's uh, you know communicating the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, whatever happens, just just be honest about it. 
Um, and, you know, we've been fortunate in Ontario that we've gotten some, some pretty good guidance from our health authorities and our government as to what practice looks like, as to what you should and shouldn't do. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've, we've translated that into our own internal policies and, you know, we update it, uh, whenever there's a, there's a meaningful update to, to add. So we're on version 14 or 15 right now. And okay. that goes out to parents and staff for acknowledgement uh, every single time. So, um, it's, it's been, uh, you know the transparency side of things is is has been th- really the easier part because uh, the parents want to know and they deserve to know um and uh, and we're all like i said we're all kind of in this together in trying to navigate these changing rules so as soon as we know something we make parents aware and as soon as parents know something they make us aware and uh, it, it works out pretty well relatively speaking oh i'm glad i'm glad that you guys are able to to keep that going and, and i agree with both you and meg um just just laying it out like it is like yeah. there's no reason to sugarcoat anything right now and um and just kind of be like this is it and this is how we're moving forward and we go from here so it's it, i think it's just a lot easier on people and it eases anxieties that are not necessary these days mm-hmm. so um let's continue on the health and safety kind of side of things that communication with families is always top of mind you guys are communicating when whenever amendments are made but do you like have any tips on how to like maintain this transparency with parents, um, like alongside of just letting them know what's actually happening and then that's really it? Or is there any like key takeaways you've had over the couple of months with keeping that going? Yeah, I think over communicating is is not a bad thing in this case, is Mm -hmm. is really just telling them everything you know, everything we know to be true, tell them. Um, Now there's always the challenge of, of, people's personal medical information and stuff like that, that you can't share. Uh, but, but the reality is, is that, you know, as long as you're honest with parents, as long as you're honest with families, um, and, and you're not trying to hide anything, like I said, the good, the bad, or the ugly, um, let them know, like we, we don't send out, you know, an email at the end of the week celebrating that we haven't had a COVID case, but, you know, in the event that you have one, um, the first thing that operators should do is sit down and figure out how to communicate with the parents. Um, communicate, you know, what has happened, communicate what the next steps are. Um, and, and I think what what is, is critically important is um, any operator is going to be uh, driven by their local health authority, no matter where you are in, in the country or, or, or internationally, um, the health authority is going to tell you what to do next. And if you put that in your communications, if you make parents aware that we're not making this up, we're being directed by experts. Yeah. Ryan, fantastic. I, I want to bring Meg on back in a sec here for open Q&A, but any last words from you? Pieces of advice, encouragement, anything you want to leave us with today? I would say just just stick with it. You know, the, the, the process is the process at the moment. None of us can control it. Uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. The, the vaccine's coming out uh, and, and I think being administered already in many countries is, is certainly promising. Um, this sector will survive. This sector will recover. Um, people will always need childcare. And uh, I, I think all of the, you know, 680 operators are, and folks that work in this field on this call um, realize that uh, while in some countries they weren't deemed an essential service, you're an essential service, uh, whether they said it or not. So um, keep fighting the uphill uh, battle and uh, we will get through it. I, I 100% agree in every way. Meg, I want to invite you to come back on and join us here. But Ryan, I'm going to grab the first question here. I just got to look through. You guys have so many questions. <laughs> Calm down all. <laughs> Some amazing things coming out of today. So a little bit of everything. Just want to make sure I get to like the top of my list here. But um, uh, Ryan, actually, I'm going to go act- over to Meg um, a little bit here. But if you want to jump in, I, I, we've had a couple of questions around like uh, parents who don't like social media or don't use social media and their children, obviously, and connecting up with videos. Maybe, uh, Meg, if you want to start us out, maybe how have you worked with those parents? Have you run into those parents, those challenges within your center? Um, and, and and how do you guys go about that? Uh, definitely. that That's a hard one. Um, there's, a oh. hand, there's, there's, there's a handful of parents that don't want their children on social media, um, which I understand. Um, I haven't been brave enough to watch that Netflix documentary yet though about social media. Neither have I. I can't. I I'm just like, yeah, no, no, no. I've, okay. I've, I've been brave enough. Yeah. But apparently that's what's driving it. But anyway, um, you know, 
with that, we have to just do the direct communication with Hi Mama. There are not in any group pictures. They're not, um, I, you know, if I go take a class picture of a pajama party, you know, that kiddo goes and colors a picture real quick or goes and helps the teacher or grab some plates from the kitchen. Um, and you, we just do just directly with Hi Mama to that parent. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely not easy, but Hi Mama does help that you can safely communicate directly to that parent with just their child. Yep. True, true. Ryan, is there anything you'd like to add for that question? I, I would just emphasize that, uh, you know, the, the functionality in Hi Mama being able to send those direct pictures is huge. We, we have a we have an interesting, uh, you know, challenge, social media related challenge right now. We typically do a Christmas concert this time of year and we'll do one for every center. Um, so in that case, we bring, you know, all the families to a gym, local school gym um, and they can record their, you know, their own videos and there's never really an issue. Obviously, we can't do that this year. So we're creating uh, individual videos for each center uh, and we're kind of combining them into, you know, one video for for each. Now, the challenge is that you can't email them. They're they're too big. The files are too large. And you also don't want people having that you know, forever. So our, our solution uh, was not so much YouTube because you can't control or password protect it, um, but was uh, another website, which I'm blanking on at the moment, a Vimeo, Vimeo uh, video upload where you can password protect um, and you then you can take it down obviously whenever you want. So we're gonna post the videos, send out the password to parents for that center. We're not gonna make it downloadable and uh, they're gonna be able to watch it, you know, see the Christmas concert and then I'll take it down a couple of days later. So it, it kind of, you know, it is a solution to that social media side of things, but we struggle in the same way. We, we can't post uh, social media content of, of, of children on our general fa- Facebook page. Um, so we try to work around it by you know, taking pictures of their crafts or their activities and stuff like that. But I, I think it's a challenge that every operator would face. I, I agree. And of course, we want safety for all the children, safety for any of the teachers, even we don't know what the, their situation is like. And you want to make sure that, you know, families are safe all around and feel safe. You don't want them to feel like anything's going wrong, especially with the way social media can go these days. It's, it can be a dark place, but we're not going to go down that too. Um, talking a little bit more about virtual, um, curious, and maybe uh, Ryan, if you want to start with this one, um, this is from Devin, just wants to know any advice about communicating virtually uh, virtually only uh, with families who do not speak a lot of English. So maybe English is a second language uh, for these families. Sure. So we actually have a lot of experience with that. And in one of our centers, we're immediately beside a welcome center uh, for new oh, Canadians, wow. new families that that are uh, uh, just immigrated to the country. Um, we utilize that resource uh, very often in, in terms of communicating, um, trying to make sure that the proper messages are understood. Um, so if you have any of those resources available to you, um, you know, I'm not sure what they're called in, in other places, but uh, welcome centers, um, they're very helpful for us in, in trying to translate if there is a uh, a language barrier. It's a good way to keep the community involved too, the outer, outer community from your center too, right? So that's super important. Um, Meg, is, is do you want to add to that one at all? You know what, we don't have a lot of um, experience with that. We, um, we don't have a lot of experience with that. So we don't have that's that, that's not a hurdle that we've had to, to jump over yet. Some some areas, it's just it really it just depends on where you are and where you land. We um, here in Toronto, you find that this the core is very diverse, and then as you go out, you get like those the groups of families who like to settle, and then you find those areas and right great food if you come that way. <laughs> um, that's where I go. All right, Meg, let's go. I'm going to direct this one to you. How are you getting your parents engaged with any activities uh, that maybe like you're sending home? So if you're sending activities to do at home, what do you get parents to like send you anything back, or just to kind of make sure that they're on point with what's going on and, and you guys are on the same page? Yeah, so um, every classroom now, it seems uh, very simple, but um, I would say even our, some of our toddler rooms, do, we do a take-home folder every night. Um, so the one side oh. is take-home, one side is return to school. Um, and so the teachers are putting things, um, you know, with their work for the day, um, and then maybe like a little thing that the parents could do with them. Um, and then you put that in the send back side of the folder. So the take home folder has been a really good way um, to communicate with the parents because another thing is we, they only, like you said, the parents can't come into the building and, you know, we're blessed where half of our campus have exterior doors so the parents can walk up to their exact door. Um, But even then it's only a couple of seconds because the teacher needs to turn and go back into the classroom to watch the kiddos, you know, so there's just a quick transaction of communication there. Um, So 
being able to have hi mama and discuss about was it this is what we sent home in your folder and then also that actual take home folder every night has been been great amazing ryan what, what about you anything to add we've doubled down on the uh, on the functionality in hi mama on the uh, lesson planning and activity planning mm -hmm. um, and we've aligned it with the uh, with the requirements uh, under uh, how learning happens in our in our local municipality uh, so on the daily reports and on the uh, activity reports that parents receive uh, they receive you know a picture of what they're doing the reason for doing it uh, and what the actual you know gross motor activity may be so it gives a good opportunity for parents to you know engage with their children when we get home so you know, tell me about the snowman you just built and you know what did you use and, and why did you build it that way um, so we're really trying to to utilize that built-in functionality um, do it have our supervisor or assistant supervisor kind of upload the information uh, you know once a month and then be able to just adapt as the lesson plan uh, goes with the natural flow of the day amazing um meg Ryan, I, I can't say how happy I am we were able to get you guys back on, especially after what happened way back. We're not going to talk about November. Um, <laughs> we are so happy to have you guys both here, to have you giving some insight and just being a part of the community, you know, the EC community that's out there today, knowing that you guys are out there and you're, you're keep moving forward and you keep pushing. From everyone at Hi Mama, I want to say thank you for joining us today. On behalf of you know 651 people on the chat, uh, fantastic things coming through the chat. I have so many, um, so many shout outs that like I, I don't know if I'll get them all in, guys, because you guys got so many great things. But thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you for making the time to be with us today. It's been an absolute pleasure having you both here. My Thanks. pleasure. I'm going to kick you guys off. Get some shout outs going, um, Miss Kai. If you want to join me. Um, I'm going to get through, you've, you've sent me so many that I almost like, it's like just rolling guys. It's like a whole roll of, she's laughing. She knows it's true. Uh, I'm uh, laughing. The, the conversation has been fantastic today. I'm like, I'm so excited for, for everything now. Like the, we've had so many great resources. You guys are full of so many great ideas. That's why you're ECs, know, right? right? This is why we have this amazing community of people. Um, okay, I wanna nail just a couple of, like I'm gonna two or three and then I'm gonna give it to you here. But uh, Tara's got, uh, in regards to, we're talking about English as a second language. So there's tons of college university classes that uh, people can try out. So make sure to, if you have that in your area to check it out, uh, especially if you have some new families in your area who are uh, maybe experiencing a bit of that difficulty right now, um, or just in general, it's a good resource to have. Um, and as well as we've got a couple of people here who've been doing five minute Zooms um to just like chat with parents we've had people who are um using local or google translate uh i use google translate when i travel it is the bomb i can't speak anything but english guys i'm really sorry it's just not my forte <laughs> oh my goodness and lots of people are continuing to do just fantastic zoom lessons and keeping their community going i'm so happy to be a part of all of it it's a phenomenal community so instructions for oh i gotta make sure to do this this is it's just me today guys i actually have to share the certificate okay it's shared you guys should be able to get it here remember just download it it's pdf you can pop your name in pop your center name in uh you guys will be good to go and if you uh haven't had the chance to get it today don't fret we'll make sure it's available for you guys tomorrow in the show notes so it will be there um so don't uh, don't forget the show notes and the recording will be there too oh and carmen she shared it too guys she's done it as well um Next week, I'm so excited. Diversity about around the holiday season. Kai, I'm so excited to be doing this one. I'm coming in my my bad sweater. It's going to be fantastic. You are too. I'm coming in my um, my ugly Christmas sweater, um, and we'll have a little bit of party. And I want our community to join our party. So. Um, I know there's not a lot of holiday parties this year, but I know your ugly holiday sweater or your cute holiday sweater is deep, buried deep in your drawers somewhere. So grab it, <laughs> take a photo, upload it to social media and tag us because we want to see you guys partying during our webinar. You know, have, okay. have a nice hot chocolate, have a nice hot toddy, party you with us. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. Same. I agree. So same time, folks, next week, December 17th, will be our last one for 2020. I cannot believe it. Um, Kaya, I'm going to get out of here and let you fill in the deets here. 
Thank you. So uh, as mentioned before, we are currently running the 2020 ECE of the Year Awards. I see some folks dropping off. Stop. We are having a special announcement. You're going to want to stick around for this. So 2020 ECE of the Year Awards, we are running it right now until almost the end of the year. You're going to want to enter because there are some phenomenal prizes. And as we know, 2020 has been a year. Um, it's been a dumpster fire of a year, as a lot of people call it. But we want to celebrate all of our amazing ECEs um, in our community, and we have uh, we have the awards to to go about. Um, so quickly, what is it? We know 2020 has been a rough year, but we also know here at Hi Mama that ECEs are critical to a child's development, and they are unfortunately one of the most underappreciated professions period. We want to change that. We want to recognize all of the amazing ECEs in our community, especially the ones that are making an impact in their community. I know there's tons of you out there and we want to title them with ECE of the year and 2020 has been huge. So let's, um, let's go about that. How do you do this? Um, first of all, the prizes are phenomenal iPads. We're going to give one to the winner and we're going to give one to the nominator as well. Um, you can choose what you want to do with those. You can keep them for personal use or you can donate them to your center. Um, a personalized award plaque as well. You're going to get an interview on our preschool podcast, um, which has, you know, thousands of listeners every week. And you're also going to get a spot spotlight on the Hi Mama website. So we are very excited to see who it's going to be this year. How do you nominate? Super easy. All you need to do is create a post on social media, so either Facebook or Instagram. Um, and you're going to use the hashtag ECE of the year and tag us. All you have to do is post a photo and tell us why they deserve to win. Like I had tears in my eyes this morning reading some of those amazing posts. They are emotional. We know they're emotional and we want to share their stories with the amazing community so that they can get the love and the attention that they deserve. So share your post when you do post it, but make sure you tag us so we can see it. Um, how do you win? We are going to be choosing top five finalists. And once we have chosen them, you as a community have two weeks to vote for the winner. So make sure you're following us. Once we announce the winner, it's going to be People's Choice Awards. You as a community and, and early childhood professionals are going to be able to decide who you want to win. It's not in our hands. It's in your hands. So snap a photo, upload it to social media. We cannot wait to see those amazing nominations. And Rhea, feel free to join me in. Carmen, if you're still there. Okay. Remember, we're all in this together. Stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And thank you so much to our amazing guests, Meg and Ryan. You guys are phenomenal in this amazing community. We loved it. I can echo that. Meg, Ryan, thank you guys so much for joining us today. A huge pleasure. I know everyone at Hi Mama, especially on the support team, they were so excited when we, we announced that this was the webinar today and they were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely awesome insights. And I think we have to have Meg and Ryan back on the show next year. And thanks everyone for tuning in today. I shared the Facebook link if you want to click on that and get the um, instructions for the EC of the Year Awards. And we'll see you next week, hopefully with your uh, ugly holiday sweaters. Bye. Bye, everybody.